It's 10 a.m. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's begin straight away with the headlines this morning. Centre announces lifting of President's rule in Uttarakhand after Harish Rawat proves majority in floor test. Rawat to hold cabinet meeting today. In a record of sorts, Rajya Sabha passes five key bills within few hours on Wednesday. Lok Sabha adjourned Sinodai. Close on the heels of her suspension, JDU MLC Manorama Devi faces arrest. Mother of Rocky Yadav, who allegedly shot dead a teenager in Gaya, is now absconding. Marathon debate underway in the Brazilian Senate ahead of vote on impeachment of President Dilma Rousseff. And at least 94 people killed and 150 injured in triple car bomb explosions in various parts of Baghdad. Islamic State terror group claims responsibility. With President's rule in Uttarakhand having been lifted, Chief Minister Harish Rawat is now holding a meeting of the state cabinet. Rawat's party has said that a formal assumption of office by the Chief Minister is not necessary since he does not have to take charge from anyone else. They cited the Supreme Court's order, which said that Rawat can assume office of the Chief Minister after the President's rule is revoked. The Supreme Court, remember, yesterday put the Harish Rawat-led Congress government back in the saddle in Uttarakhand, allowing the central government to revoke President's rule following Rawat's victory in the floor test. प्रदेश की जनता से कहना चाहता हूं कि उनका उनका सेवक उनके आशीर्वाद से हाजिर है और जो भी राज्य की भलाई के लिए गरीब गांव गार गधेरों की भलाई के लिए हो सकेगा हरीश रावत और उनकी उनका मंत्रिमंडल समर्पित भाव से काम करें Congress workers celebrating in Uttarakhand on a day when the Supreme Court puts its stamp of approval on the vote of confidence in the Assembly. The verdict reinstated the Harish Rawat government six weeks after the centre unseated him. After nine disqualified MLAs were barred from voting, Rawat got 33 votes out of the 61 MLAs in the floor test. असमंजस का रहा नाना प्रकार के कई नुकसान उत्तराखंड को झेलने पड़े मगर मेरा हमारे साथियों का सबका हमने अभी बातचीत की हमारा मानना है अंत भला शो भला और यहां से हम एक नई शुरुआत कर सकें द विक्ट्री वाज अ शॉट इन द आर्म फॉर द कांग्रेस Party Vice President Rahul Gandhi lashed out at the BJP on Twitter. This was a bad attempt which they had made. Finally, they had eat to the eat to humble pie, and I think in future the central government would not repeat its mistake another step. For the BJP, Rawat's return proved to be a loss of face given the manner in which the centre imposed President's rule. The party, however, put a different spin to the events. Congress ne bahumat ko khrida hai. कांग्रेस को बहुमत वहां मिला नहीं है लेकिन कांग्रेस ने उत्तराखंड की जनता के बहुमत को खोया है और यहां इन्होंने खरीदा है तो कांग्रेस पता नहीं किसकी जीत का जश्न कांग्रेस मना रही है सुन आफ्टर द जजमेंट द यूनियन कैबिनेट रेकमेंडेड द प्रेसिडेंट्स रूल बी इन वोक्ड इन उत्तराखंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जो वहां आदेश था उत्तराखंड में वो आदेश के हिसाब से वहां जो नतीजा निकाला उसके हिसाब से आज केंद्र मंत्रिमंडल ने राष्ट्रपति शासन वहां समाप्त करने के लिए राष्ट्रपति जी को सिफारिश करने के लिए निर्णय लिया है उत्तराखंड वॉज प्लंज इन टू पोलिटिकल क्राइसिस सुन आफ्टर नाइन कांग्रेस एम एल एज रिवोल्टेड अगेंस्ट द हरीश रावत गवर्नमेंट आफ्टर द कंटेंशियस वोट अगेंस्ट रावत बजट दे जॉइन द बीजेपी दैट लेट टू द गवर्नमेंट लूजिंग इट्स मेजोरिटी द सेंटर देन इम्पोज प्रेसिडेंट रूल इन द स्टेट जस्ट अ डे बिफोर रावत वॉज टोल्ड टू टेक अ ट्रस्ट वोट रावत देन चैलेंज द डिसीजन आफ्टर विच द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिरेक्टेड द वोट ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस ऑन मे टेंथ एंड बार नाइन डिसक्वालिफाइड एम एल एज फ्रॉम टेकिंग पार्ट इन द वोटिंग ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी
And news now from Parliament. The Lok Sabha has been adjourned sine die two days ahead of schedule. Ten bills, including the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court Bill 2016 and the Anti-Hijacking Bill, were passed during the three-week session, which saw no adjournment due to disruptions. The eighth session of the 16th Lok Sabha, which commenced on the 25th of April, had 13 sittings spread over 92 hours and 21 minutes. The session, which was initially the second part of the budget session, was in fact a new one as the House was prorogued after the first phase that ended on the 10th of March. This session was to conclude on the 13th of May, but was brought to a sudden end yesterday. The session also saw discussion on the alleged irregularities in the Augusta Westland helicopter deal, during which the government and the Congress traded charges against each other. Another highlight was the passage of the budget in respect of Uttarakhand for 2016-17, Remember, the Hill State was brought under President's rule on the 27th of March, which was revoked on Wednesday. The drought situation in several parts of the country was also discussed at length. The House also held one short-duration discussion under Rule 193 regarding drought and drinking water crisis in many states and the need to consider interlinking of rivers and water resource management. I am happy to inform you that in the recent past, this is the first session in which House was not adjourned even for a single minute due to interruption. Due to interruptions, and I thank the entire House for cooperation extended to the chair. The House stands adjourned, Sinada. Meanwhile, in the Rajya Sabha, it was a record of sorts on Wednesday. The upper house passed five bills in a matter of just a few hours. The house was under attack for delaying the passage of key legislations. The bills, including some key finance legislations, were passed during the course of a few hours in the post-lunch period on Wednesday. The house sat past 8 p.m. to pass the key bills. Now, among the bills that were passed include the Finance Bill 2016, the Appropriation Bill 2016, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, the Rajendra Central Agricultural University Bill 2015 and the Indian Trust Amendment Bill of 2015. The last two bills were passed without any discussion. Incidentally, the bill to upgrade the Rajendra Agricultural University in Bihar into a central university was passed both by Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha on the same day, which is a rare development. So as we told you, the upper house passed the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 on Wednesday. Several members gave suggestions on the implementation of the bill that has already been passed by the Lok Sabha. The upper house passed the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 unanimously on Wednesday. The bill seeks to consolidate and amend laws relating to reorganization and insolvency resolution of corporate persons, partnership firms and individuals in a time-bound manner. Several members gave suggestions for better implementation of the law and sought clarifications about its scope. I personally feel that the provisions of this bill, <coughs> which also help in, will help in collecting, collating and authenticating and disseminating the information which is required by, for investors, for entrepreneurs and for all stakeholders. Bankruptcy insolvency kanun hai. Isne jo bahut sare kanuno ko, jo multiple kanun jo is vishay shetra mein the, unko sabse pehle unified karne ka kaam humne iske madhyam se kiya hai. Iski appeal kaha kari jayegi? और इस पे किस कोर्ट का अधिकार होगा कहीं ऐसा ना हो वो कोर्ट अपने अधिकार को आजकल वैसे भी जुडिशरी छोटे से छोटा जज जो है वो भी जो डिस्ट्रिक्ट में पहली पोस्टिंग में पाया है वो भी आज अपने अधिकारों का जिस तरीके से इस्तेमाल कर रहा है तो कहीं इस एक्ट का जो हम जिस लिए लाए हैं इसको इसका दुरुपयोग ना हो एक तो हमारा ये आपसे अनुरोध है महोदय यह विधेयक एक प्रभावी विधि ढांचे का निर्माण और बाजारों के विकास में सहायता एवं उद्यमशीलता के विकास को गतिमान करने में सहायक सिद्ध होगा द वर्कर्स ड्यूज आर टू बी गिवन द सेम स्टेटस ऑफ ऑल अदर इंपॉर्टेंट नॉट ओनली सिक्योर क्रेडिटर बट ऑल्सो द वर्कर्स ड्यू शुड ऑल्सो शुड गेट द इक्वल प्राइमेसी वेन द ड्यूज क्लियरेंस ऑफ डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स सिचुएशन अराइजेस वाई टू ईयर्स why not the whatever entire dues of the workers legal legitimate due and workers due becomes due only after they give their labor that is their earned dues it is not 
it is not the other kind of news. So the, I will request R. Japanda Minister, in this area, I think the entire legitimate earned dues of the workers, including the statutory dues, must be included. ये क्यों बैंक्रप्सी बैंकों ने नहीं देखा और हजार हजार करोड़ जिसने दिया क्या कुछ प्रावधान है इसमें बिल में कि उनके ऊपर कुछ एक्शन लिया जाएगा उन लोगों के ऊपर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फिक्स की जाएगी क्या उसके जांच करने के लिए कोई भी व्यवस्था इस कोर्ट में इस व्यवस्था उसमें है Replying to the discussion, the finance minister and his deputy clarified several provisions of the bill and assured that the new will be properly implemented. Sika will eventually go. That's the first. Sarfazi will have to be amended and brought in line with the change provisions of the bankruptcy law. There are some changes which are required to be done. I have introduced those changes in the Lok Sabha today and that I have had it referred to the Joint Committee and that is why I insisted that the same Joint Committee should look at it because they have dealt with this act. Joint Committee for ensuring that it was 24 months worth of workmen dues that we protect in this manner. Of course, we as a government are trying our level best as well to create a robust safety net so that it's not necessary that our workers are reliant only on a company or a job. The bill was referred to a joint select committee of both houses that made more than 100 unanimous recommendations that were included in the bill by the government. Vishal Dhaya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the upper house also unanimously passed the Indian Trusts Amendment Bill 2015. The bill that further amends the Indian Trusts Act 1882 was earlier passed by the Lok Sabha. Sir, I move that the bill as amended be passed. Motion moved that the bill as amended be passed. The question is that the bill as amended be passed. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say no. I think the ayes have, the ayes have, the ayes have. The bill as amended is passed. And Finance Minister Arun Jaitley defended the expensive KG Basin gas project while discussing the finance bill in the upper house. He said international consultants have certified that the block holds 14.4 trillion cubic feet of gas reserves thrice the size of Reliance's KGD6 block. He said exploration is a risky business where well-drilled may yield nothing from one place and might yield from the other place. He also added that these are very high investment projects. In 2005, the then Chief Minister of Gujarat had announced that the Gujarat State Petroleum Corp's discovery holds 21 TCF of gas reserves. GSPC was to start production from KG8 by 2013, but the project has not yet started commercial production. Hence, opposition Congress allege a scam of 20,000 crore rupees, which was mostly borrowed from public sector banks. Extensively, These are very high investment projects. You may dig at five places, you may waste all your money and get no gas or no oil. At the sixth place, you may get it. And you are here looking in terms of very deep sea exploration. Sir, so exploration itself is scientific, but it is also has an element of gamble. You can, for mining purposes, for pet oil exploration, for gas exploration, you can keep on digging. You may get it, you may not get it. And international experts, international certified agencies have now certified it is not 21 TCF, it is not 1 TCF as you mentioned, that at least they have internationally respected agencies have certified that 14.4 TCS TCF is available in that particular field. Time for a very short break here on Breakfast News. We'll be right back. Translation means converting knowledge into products useful for improving the quality of life. So we need to apply that knowledge to find solutions. And that is what we are trying to do you, you know, in this institute. Somebody who has understanding of biology, somebody who has understanding of medicine, somebody who has understanding of engineering. If a team is put together, can we then develop novel diagnostics? Watch Eureka with Dr. Sudhanshu Brati, Dean at Translational Health Science and Technology Institute, only on Rajya Sabha TV.
Thanks for staying with us from Breakfast News. On to the latest now in the Bihar road rage incident. Former JDO MLC Manorama Devi, whose son Rocky Yadav is accused of killing teenager Aditya Sachdeva for allegedly overtaking his vehicle, is now absconding after being booked under the Bihar Excise Amendment Act of 2016. She faces arrest for storing liquor bottles in her house despite complete prohibition in Bihar. And amid fresh revelations each day, Opposition pressure is also mounting on the ruling JDU to act against its former leader. Hours after her son Rocky Yadav and husband Bindi Yadav were sent to judicial custody, suspended JDU MLC Manorama Devi has gone into hiding after an arrest warrant was issued against her. Officials say her mobile phone has been switched off since Tuesday, soon after the arrest of her son. The warrant against her has been issued for violating the new prohibition law in Bihar. The Gaya police had recovered at least six bottles of Indian-made foreign liquor from her residence while conducting a raid to nab her son Rocky, who had shot dead a teenager in Gaya in an incident of road rage. Now, as per the new prohibition law in Bihar, possession of liquor is a cognizable offence under the Excise Act. The offence attracts 5 to 10 years jail term and penalty of up to 10 lakh rupees. In this case, they have become non-FIR accused. That's why they have been given a warrant for them. Officials of the Excise Department and the Gaya Police sealed her posh residence in Gaya on Wednesday. Efforts to locate the former JDU legislator have now been fast-tracked. The fact that the fact that the fact that the fact जो चीजें आई हैं उसी के क्रम में ये आगे की कार्रवाई है जो सिलिंग की कार्रवाई की जा रही है। मनोरमा देवी कुड आल्सो फेस चार्जेस ऑफ हेल्पिंग हर अक्यूज्ड सन इस्केप आफ्टर किलिंग टीनेजर आदित्य सचदेवा एस कॉल रिकॉर्ड शो शी हैड बीन इन टच विद हिम व्हाइल ही वाज ऑन द रन एंड ट्रबल फॉर हर डस it has become increasingly difficult for Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar to fight the opposition's allegations that Jungle Raj has returned in Bihar. The crime was zero tolerance की बात करने वाले वाली जो सरकार थी JDU की उसको जो है वो crime उनके आते ही जिस तरह से बढ़ा है बेतहाशा crime और अपराध बढ़े हैं और अपराधी जो है वो भयमुक्त होकर के अपने अपराधी गतिविधियों को कर रहे हैं उसको उन्हें देखना चाहिए the Bihar government, however, maintains that law will take its own course, no matter how powerful the culprit is. हम विश्वास दिलाते हैं कि जो दोषी है, उसपे सख्त से सख्त कार्रवाई होगी। इस केस को हम लोग अच्छे से लड़ने का काम करेंगे। जो दोषी होगा कोर्ट में, उसको करी से करी सजा हम लोग दिलाएंगे। जो भी गलती जनता दल यू या सहयोगी पार्टी का कोई भी नेता या उसके परिवार का व्यक्ति करेगा किसी को भक्सा नहीं जाएगा कानून सब के लिए एक जैसा है और उनके विरुद्ध जो भी मामले दर्ज होंगे उसमें कार्रवाई की जाए। The incident also reverberated inside Parliament, where BJP MPs alleged complete lawlessness in Bihar and demanded imposition of President's rule in the state. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Enforcement Directorate has questioned former IAF Chief S P Tiagi yet again in connection with the money laundering probe in the 3,600 crore rupee VVIP chopper deal. The agency wanted to obtain some more information from him on the role of the three alleged middlemen named in the case. Tiagi was also questioned about his dealings with the alleged middlemen in the case, including Christian Michel. Now, while Tiagi denied having any connection with the middlemen, Christian Michel said he only shook hands with Tiagi once. Tiagi's questioning was reportedly necessary in view of a recent judgment by an Italian court on corruption charges in the sale of a dozen Augusta Westland helicopters to India. Tiagi is alleged to have reduced the height of the VVIP helicopters so that Augusta Westland could be included in the bids. The retired Air Chief Marshal was questioned in the same case by the CBI last week. And the Enforcement Directorate is mulling attaching domestic assets and shares worth about 9,000 crore rupees owned by liquor baron Vijay Malia in connection with its money laundering probe against him and others in the IDBI bank loan fraud case. ED officials said yesterday that the agency has already begun the exercise of identifying and valuing the countrywide immovable assets of Vijay Malia in order to place them under attachment under the criminal provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Banks will also be taken on board before attaching these assets under the PMLA laws. The agency will also inform market regulator SEBI 
about its move to similarly attach Malia shares in various Indian companies so that no third party rights are created. As per pre uh, preliminary assessment done by the agency, the value of the assets will be around 9,000 crore rupees, which is equal to the total default of bank loans, which Malia is accused of. However, in a major setback to the liquor baron, revenue officials in Goa have allowed the lenders to Kingfisher Airlines to take physical, pose uh, physical possession of Kingfisher Villa in Candolim. The villa, valued at 90 crore rupees, used to be Malia's base in Goa. And moving to some international news now, at least 94 people have been killed in three car bomb explosions in Baghdad. In the biggest, in fact, the bloodiest day in the Iraqi capital this year, the attack also hit a market in a Shiite-dominated area. The attacks were claimed by the Islamic State terror group. It came after the government logged in a political crisis that some have won would undermine the fight against the jihadists. The worst bombing struck the frequently targeted southern city area of northern Baghdad, killing at least 64 people there. The blast set nearby shops on fire and left debris, including the charred, twisted remains of a vehicle in the street. Another suicide car bomb attack killed at least 17 people at the entrance of the northwestern neighborhood of Kadimia, which is home to an important Shiite Muslim shrine. And in the Jamia district in western Baghdad, another car bomb went off in the afternoon, killing at least 13 more people. A total of around 150 people were also injured in the three bombings. First, our condolences go out to the families uh, that were affected by the uh, bombings in Baghdad today. Uh, as, as we've seen, as the enemy loses more and more terrain, uh, they resort to some of these desperate acts. Uh, the security forces in Baghdad have the situation under control, but our, our condolences go out. It's been more than 10 hours into Brazil's Senate debate about ousting President Dilma Rousseff from office, with the pro-impeachment forces looking certain to win the vote. Rousseff stands accused of illegally using government funds to mask the true state of the Brazilian economy. Now, if the senators vote for a full trial, Rousseff could be suspended for up to 180 days. The clock is ticking for Dilma Rousseff. Brazil's Senate is in session for more than 10 hours to vote on whether or not to put the nation's first female president on trial on charges of breaking budget laws. Each senator who has registered to speak will be given 15 minutes to air their views. With more than 60 of the 81 senators taking up the offer, the session is expected to last around 15 hours. A minha expectativa é de que tudo ocorra normalmente e que esse momento só servirá ao Brasil, só ajudará no aperfeiçoamento das instituições, se não danificar a democracia. On Tuesday, in one last ditch effort to stop her impeachment, Dilma appealed to the Supreme Court to stop the proceedings. É o momento decisivo. É o momento decisivo para a democracia brasileira. Esse momento que nós estamos vivendo hoje. The government asked the Supreme Court to annul impeachment proceedings, arguing that they were politically motivated and had no legal basis. Conhecimento já feito pelo Supremo Tribunal Federal de que ele agia com desvio de poder, inclusive tendo praticado, como disse, atos a posteriori dele ser real, mostram indiscutivelmente a nulidade de todo este processo. But the top court rejected her last-minute appeal to stop the impeachment vote. Meanwhile, the police fired tear gas at protesters gathered outside Congress. According to the military police, 5,000 protesters were present in Brasilia, 4,000 against impeachment and 1,000 in favor. Rousseff has called the impeachment process an attempted coup. Several leaders in Congress are also accused of corruption, including the Senate president. A week prior to the 11th May vote, Vice President Temer was fined for violating campaign finance caps, 
meaning that while he could take the reins from Rousseff in the short term, he may face a year-long ban on running for office. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's all we have time for in this bulletin. We'll head into a quick break, after which the Parliament News will follow. Stay tuned.